May I read that, uh, Chairman? Yes, please. On the please last paragraph. Senior Vice Chairperson, last paragraph. Line 15, 16, and 17 on page 2 of the committee report, the draft committee report. It reads, resolve further that any other details relating to the specific apportionment of delegates, election of delegates, and the holding of uh, constitutional convention shall be embodied in the implementing legislation. Mr. Chair, before any motion for approval is made, may I request that uh, paragraphs 10 to 14, as well as paragraphs 15 to 16, should include not only the election of delegates, but the uh, appointment of delegates. Uh, earlier, we heard former Chief Justice Renato Puno uh, his suggestion that we have a hybrid election when it comes to the Constitutional Convention. And it would be wise for the committee to consider such a pro proposal wherein a certain percentage of the delegates in the possible CONCON will also be appointed so that legal luminaries such as former chief justices, economists, uh, members of the indigenous uh, peoples, as well as other sectors, can also be represented without being elected by a legislative district. And Mr. Chair, yes, uh, Deputy uh, Speaker, question to uh, Congress: uh, Who will be appointing this? Uh, the people? appointing authority would be, uh, I would suggest, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, as well as the Senate President, since this is a pure, uh, pure exercise of our constituent power. So it will be the Senate president as well as the speaker who will appoint members. Uh, regardless, uh, it will be discussed in a measure that will set the parameters for a constitutional convention, such as the qualifications, the number of delegates. So all that will be included in a proposed measure separate from the Resolution of both houses calling for a constitutional convention. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so first let me just uh, state there's a motion from the uh, honorable chair. chair. Uh, yes. <laughs> May I also make some points on point, point of order? Um for procedural. Ah, well, let yep, us first before. have uh, we have the motion first, uh, seconded, and then whether he will accept uh, the chair, the chair, the proponent accepts the chair, and this will be open to debate. So first. We will know who will second the motion of uh, Congresswoman Rita Robes to consider a committee report, uh, a number committee report, which calls for a resolution of both houses calling for a constitutional convention. Any second? Are you second? Uh, seconded by Congresswoman Manuel uh, to consider committee report. Now there is... Congressman uh, Bongalon, Mr. Chair. Uh, Congressman Bongalon, I'm sorry. They're all young. I'm wrong yeah. from the majority, Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, I presume that you <laughs> Sorry, sorry. But you're very young. You also... Uh, uh, so, Congressman Mungalon, did you <laughs> second that? Now, is there any objection? Mr. Chair, there's not an... Uh, there's an objection. Yeah, there's an objection. We'll go to that before that because there is a prior motion. The prior motion is to have a motion to amend uh, by having election of... Uh, appointment of delegates. So let us go to that. Is the chairman, uh, is the proponent uh, accepting that particular amendment by Congressman, uh, uh, senior deputy leader? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, um, the amendment is accepted. accepted. So, uh, so now we now go to uh, the deliberation of our joint resolution as amended. So um, RBH, uh, resolution both houses as amended. So now we, we will go, the procedure is we go minority first, and then majority, and then minority. So we Mr. will Chairman, now hear... Mr. Chairman? Yes. Sorry, uh, I came late. No? Uh, ano yung motion ni Congresswoman Rida? Yeah, let me just point? restate the motion. Please, the motion is you. to approve committee report numbered one. No? It's still a numbered, but the committee uh, report that will adopt a resolution of both houses uh, calling for a constitutional convention to propose amendments or revision of the 87th Constitution. Is the Honorable Deputy Speaker qualified? I am in favor, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we will go into that now. So we will hear from the minority on the motion. Kindly take the floor, Congresswoman Franz. 
I think, um, Mr. Chair, it's, it is not on on the House resolution. I, I just would like to um, ask some some procedural. Yes. So, so would that, would this mean that uh, we are through with the uh, um, public consultation already in so the morning? Yes, yes. Uh, we had four already public consultations in house, and we have four already all over the country. Uh, already so, done public consultation. That's correct. So, maglalabas po ba yung ating committee ng parang documents as regards to the results of the public consultation? Well, we will come up with that, uh, certainly. Mm -hmm. However, as I've stated earlier this morning, there's already a matrix uh, of uh, what has uh, the percentages of those in favor and against on the issues. Okay. We will give you a copy on that. Yes. Um, another thing, Mr. Chair, kasi... Um, so this morning, uh, we end the public consultation. That's correct. So isn't it that we have still three days so that we can have um, committee report or draft committee report according to our rules? Uh, the three days period is for our hearings and we were notified already of the uh, agenda for this afternoon last week. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you so much. But Mr. Chairman, chairman here. Yes. point of clarification. Yes, Congressman, Congressman, Chairman PD. In the event that we approve this House bill entitled an act implementing resolution of both houses, number of Congress, etc., will the provisions here, starting from Section 1 up to Section 15, up to Section 18, 18. Will, all, will all of them be included in the law? creating the or uh, creating the constitutional convention uh, at this point we are just now discussing resolution of both houses not yet the accompanying bill which so, has 18 sections just for the record it is very clear that whatever provisions mm. there are in this resolution that will not be binding on us and therefore we can include everything in the pro in the bill itself regarding the constitutional convention yes uh, approval of this resolution is a general statement of our committee and there will be an accompanying bill and which will be discussed after this whatever action we have here and the accompanying bill just a follow up might also include amendments alterations of these provisions contained in this house bill number Yes, okay, we will proceed much. there after this one. So we go one by one. We will also vote by each one. No? First, we vote on the resolution. And then we next we will vote on the accompanying bill, which lays down the details of the election and the funding. So, yes, we'd like to hear. Uh, yes, uh, Congressman Richard. Yes, Mr. Chair, I just would like to follow up on uh, <clears throat> Congressman Barzaga regarding the, the details of uh, the resolution of both houses. Because in, in my in my um, House Bill 6805, it also states there the defining defining the qualifications for the delegates of the of uh, the delegates for the uh, con con. Yes, you will hear I, that when we when go I read to the, the resolution yeah, of both we'll... houses. The qualification that I personally want does not state here. Uh, we will go there to the bill. Yes, uh, regarding qualifications after the resolution. I mean, because the, be taken today, uh, the parliamentary or? status is that we are now discussing the first measure, which is always a resolution of both houses, yes. if you want to have a constituent assembly. After that, there is always the accompanying bill, because there will be the details of the coming constitutional convention. Yes. Mr. Chair, will that be taken on the floor? or Here, on the right here. Okay. We will take your suggestions when we go to the second subject matter. Thank you, Mr. So Chair. So we go first. I, I also have a raising of hand of Deputy uh, Minority Leader uh, Paul Daza. Please take the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, what's on the floor now is the resolution to support to consol cons consolidating the different bills uh, for it for a constitutional convention uh, it uh, consolidates the resolutions the resolution on calling yeah the bill will be the next one and i think it has been given to you there are two yeah. measures that we have which will be tackled separately to allow a full debate on this okay, okay. so mr chair i'd just like to put on the record uh ha ha having attended uh, two committee hearings uh 
chaired by no less than you and the other vice chairs. And after doing my own consultation with uh, various stakeholders, uh, I, I, I'm in the position that uh, it is timely to address um, the economic provisions of the 1987 constitution and I support uh, moves to amend such um, because many stakeholders have spoken to me uh, basically stating that these issues uh, should be addressed is paramount and can be addressed in a much faster mode, in a less expensive mode. Uh, I'd like to put on the record that um, I think the best way is to a constitution, constituent assembly and not a constitutional convention. So therefore, allow me to abstain, because I know you'll take it to a vote. Uh, and I like to reserve my right to interpolate the resolution or the bill when it gets taken up on second reading, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for that manifestation. Yes, certainly we would register now, as early as now, the vote of abstention on the solution of both houses by the Honorable Deputy Minority Leader. And this representation will be happy to, uh, in case this is approved and the other bill, if this will be in the plenary, everyone, it's open for everyone to uh, interpolate the sponsor. Thank you very much. And so we go now to uh, the minority first on uh, her comments on resolution of both houses. Are you, uh, no more uh, comments. Yes. I don't have uh, comments, Mr. Chair, in, in, in as far as uh, we are concerned because we are voting no. Thank you for that early manifestation. So we go now to the manifestation and comments of our other members of the committee. Uh, those voting, even and voting, we are allowing, even those who are not ex officio and official members who are present, uh, this chair will listen to all our colleagues in Congress, very important piece of our resolution and legislation. So we go now, who will now uh, talk from the, for the majority? None. Okay. So in that case, uh, we are ready for voting. Reiterate. reiterate the motion as amended. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, we'd just like to reiterate the motion. My motion to approve, of course, the joint resolution in the House of Representatives, headed by, of course, yours, Chairperson Rufus Rodriguez. As Thank amended. You so much. As with amended. With the uh, appointment of some delegation. Yes, second, sir. Mr. Chair. It's a uh, 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 yes. Just a point of inquiry. I understand that the resolution which is the subject matter of discussion, is the resolution of both houses calling for a constitu constitutional convention to propose amendments to or revision of the 1987 of the Republic of the Philippines. Unfortunately, Correct. what I clarified earlier is supposed to be the committee report, which is not yet the subject of discussion right now. The subject of voting right now would be merely the resolution yes. of both houses. That's not correct. The committee not yet the, no, the committee report the committee already. Report. It's the committee report on just the resolution of both houses. Uh, the bill, companion bill, will be after this. Okay, so we'll be voting on two. Yes. Number one, definitely. Resolution of both houses. And number two, committee report. Uh, both are committee reports. So there'll be two committee reports. So we shall be voting jointly or separately? Separately. So, so the first voting will transparency. be on this resolution of both houses without any specific provisions regarding the manner, the qualifications, yes. etc., of the members of the Constitutional Convention. You are right. This is just a call as given to us by Article 17 of our 1987 Constitution, the call for Constitutional Convention. The details will come from the bill that you are going to discuss later, okay. both subject to committee report. So, yeah, we're open to more clarifications. Are you clarified, Chair P.D. Barsaga? Yes, of course. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, I would just like yes, to uh, stand correct. I would just like to be, stand I know, I'd just like to be, stand um, to be corrected and to say that I said, that the thing that I said, it should be both houses, not a joint resolution. It should be both houses, a, pro a resolution of both houses. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. So, any other discussion from the uh, our members on Zoom? If anyone would like, this is an open uh, discussion and we like to hear everyone. None? 
Okay, so uh, this is a suggestion. <laughs> we go to voting. There is no indication from those in Zoom. Those physically present are clarified and they have already a position. So we now go to voting. This historic voting on this committee report on calling for a constitutional convention. Now, for the record, we will go into nominal voting of those who are present. Okay. Uh, no, there is an objection because they will vote no. Ready uh, to France, and there's an abstention. So, can you call those uh, present for their vote? So that will be very transparent on each one of these. Okay. Uh, the committee now will call the role of those present vote in Zoom and also those physically present. Okay, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is not in any order. Um, those present on site, nominal voting, a representative Bongalon. My vote is yes. Representative Robes. My vote is yes. Representative um, Deputy Speaker Gonzalez. My vote is yes. Representative Minority Leader is not here yet. Um, then um, Deputy Majority Leader Pomarin. Senior Vice Chairperson Defensor. Yes. Honorable Raul Manuel. Is he around? Okay. Um, Representative Barsaga. My vote is in the affirmative. Okay. Representative um, <laughs> Vice Chairperson. Well, Senior Deputy Minority Leader already voted ab abstention. I abstain. And can I explain later or now, Mr. Chair? Um, give you time to explain. Okay. I'd like to encourage my colleagues. Uh, I think we're, we're in the right direction, uh, Chairman to discuss the economic provisions uh, and uh, amending those. I think uh, most in the private sector, the departments uh, believe that uh, for, for economy to progress even more and to deal with the uh, harshness of what happened with the, with the COVID pandemic, uh, we need to liberalize uh, foreign direct investments, uh, ownership, uh, but I'd like to state on the record that the best way to do it is through a constituent assembly. That will be much faster. Uh, and I think that uh, if we did a constitutional assembly, this will immediately put the burden on the Senate uh, to discuss the, those issues. And that's why I would like to rec rec uh, record my vote as an abstention, Mr. Chair. Committee Secretary, please register the vote of abstain for Deputy Minority Leader Oldaza. We'd like to welcome the Honorable Arlene Rosas. Please give her copies of the two uh, matters pending now in the committee. Do you have a copy already? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank Mr. You. Chair, is this a voting time? Yes, but we can uh, repeat for you what is to be voted on. And we can ask again Chairman Rida to uh, Chair Rida to... Uh, give us the uh, meat of the motion as amended. Um, thank, you so thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Um, Kong, Kong Arli would just like to share, I would like to reiterate our motion for the approval of the, of the joint resolution calling for a constitutional convention. I mean, this is actually a resolution of both houses, of all the resolution filed by our colleagues. So we are voting for it. That's all, Mr. Chair. You would you like to, to some yeah get, comment uh, first before the voting because you came in and we would like to give you time to uh, to uh, comment on this uh, before we'll ask you for the vote. Yes, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, before I vote, Siguro, I would like to ask why is there two measures right now in? Yeah, let me answer that. There are two measures because one is the constituent power to call for a convention needing two thirds vote. Second will be the details. This is also what was done in the 1971 constitution uh, election because there has to be in detail. Uh, the second is the bill, accompanying bill, which will uh, have also constituent power. The second one will be the bill that will provide for qualifications and then the budget and uh, other powers that will be given. So we are just now focusing on the first one on the resolution calling for a constitutional convention. Then we'll discuss the uh, detail 
uh, procedure, expenditures, and qualifications in the next subject matter on the bill. Okay, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Chair, yung first lang muna. Parang ganyan, yes. yung resolution yes. of both houses yon. Yeah, calling just, just for a con -con, Calling yeah. for the resolution of yeah. both houses. Anyway, Mr. Chair, um, on both naman, Mr. Chair, I would like to profess my vote right now. No, na It's a no for us. No, First of all, we have seven key arguments for this charter change no, na gusto natin. Current and urgent problems that we are facing escalating prices, low wages, massive hunger, joblessness, landlessness, do not stem from the 1987 Constitution. Yun po ang position namin. Hence, amending the Constitution will not magically cure these problems. Now, the foreign direct investment myth, inward foreign capital flows to the Philippines have been increasing over the years under decades of neoliberal policies, but the economic base remains semi-feudal. Actually, ang problema nga ng mga problema nga natin ngayon ang hindi nudulog madalas ay yung mga problema ng mga magsasaka. Backward and pre-industrial and the quantity and quality of jobs have remained low. Now, production in special economic zones has remained stuck on low value added outputs due to the inferior positioning of the country in the global value chain. Further, liberalizing investments will only cement our inferior position that and will not result to any technological transfer. Hindi naman po talaga tinatransfer dito yung technology, you know? um, bagkus, market po talaga tayo ng mga produkto, much less towards creation of national industries. There in turn will, will generate jobs, dapat ganon. The Philippines has liberalized key economic sectors over the years, even without amending the constitu constitution through various neoliberal policies such as amendments to the foreign investment negative list and the latest amendments to the amendments to the foreign investments neg uh, sorry amendments to the public service act yung PSA po na pinagdebatehan natin nung nakaraan ano which allowed 100% equity in telecommunications domestic shipping railways and subways, airlines, expressways, and tollways, and the airports. Ngayon, opening our lands to total foreign ownership will displace more Filipino farmers and indigenous communities and further undermine our food security and national sovereignty. This will deny any chance at instituting a genuine land use plan in line with our national interests and needs of Filipinos. On political reforms, opening the constitution to political amendments under the Marcos Jr. administration amounts to opening a Pandora's box, especially with the Marcos family's pension to stay in power. Once the process for amending the Constitution is commenced, nothing will prevent the delegates to the Constitutional Convention from proposing new amendments not contained in the bills and resolutions filed at the committee. Extending the total cumulative terms of public officials will further entrench political dynasties and families rather than end them, aside from the fact that it is not a solution to bad governance. So yun po, so wisdom po at relevance nitong ginagawa natin, Mr. Chair, we are left in the dark in searching for clues that will justify the urgency and timing of deliberating charter change measures amid the fast track approval of the administration's priority measures. Para sa amin at ordinaryong mamamayan siguro, mahirap tanggapin na binubuksan na naman ang usapin ng Chacha gayong uh, higit natin kailangang pag-usapan at aprobahan ng signifikanteng dagdag sahod, pagpapababa ng presyo at pagpapalakas ng lokal na agrikultura ng bansa. So, constitutional ba talaga ang nature ng problem natin, Mr. Chair? Yan ba ang ating ano, problema? So you, those are the questions ano, na um, nais nating masagot. At nakapiecemeal amendments naman tayo na, nung nakaraan, katulad ng amendments to the Public Service Act, amendments to retail, re liberalization law, regular na amyenda sa foreign investment negative list, at marami pang iba. Bakit hindi ito sumasapat, Mr. Chair? Parang ganyan. At lumalabas po sa datos, Mr. Chair, napapalaki na ang net foreign investment inflow sa bansa. Um, yung FDI amounting to 10.5 billion in 2021. 
represents a 54.2% year-on-year growth from 2020. Ngayon, this is a new record level high for the country as it surpassed the 10.3 billion US dollars net flows in 2017. So, pataas naman po siya. So, bakit, bakit natin kailangan nito? Yan po yung uh, mga tanong natin, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Chair, uh, Siguro yun po no initially yung um, gusto na natin na i-mention kaugnay dito. So Mr. Chair on economic uh, and the centralization of powers to dictate terms on foreign, foreign equity sharing in the hands of Congress. Uh, Mr. Chair, bill seeking economic charter change introduces the phrase tama po ba nandiyan pa rin yun, yung unless otherwise provided by law. Meron pa rin. So, in two key provisions of our 1987 Constitution, with the effect of essentially conferring con Congress the exclusive and extraordinary power to fix and adjust the current constitutional restrictions on foreign ownership of key sectors of the eco economy, including utilities, mass media, education, among others. Kaya mahalaga pong linawin dito, no? Mr. Chair, yung mga, um, siguro mga tanong po ito sa mga sponsors, ano, Mr. Chair, um, sa pamamagitan ba ng panukala na ito na pagbabago sa konstitusyon, magiging fleksible ang criteria sa foreign ownership limits sa mga mahalagang sektor sa ekonomiya? Sang-ayon po ba din sa mga, ang mga sponsors sa pamamagitan ng unless otherwise provided by law, ibinibigay sa Kongreso ang pambihirang kapangyarihan na itakda ang restriction o di kaya higit na pagluluwag sa foreign ownership provisions sa constitution. And sang-ayon din ba sa mga sponsors natin na maaaring pwedeng mabago ang provision hinggil sa foreign restriction, restrictions batay sa kagustuhan ng Kongreso o ng mga succeeding administrations. Pwedeng higit isang beses ang pagbabagong ito batay sa ipapasang batas. So parang ganun, ano yung mga tanong natin, Mr. Chair. At yung Congress ang magkakaroon ng eksklusibong kapangyarihang magtakda ng foreign ownership at foreign equity participation. Hindi ba't masesentro dito ang panunuhol ng mga dayuhang korporasyon para gawing pabor ang terms sa kanilang industriya? Uh, ibig sabihin, de depende sa backroom talks ang pag-usad ng full liberalization measures. At palaisipin, palaisipan po sa amin, Mr. Chair, kung saan ang gagaling ang congressional power na ito Malinaw, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Chair. Nako, speaker na kasi baka ito rin po yung itanong ko no kung ito ay pudu, puputa na sa sa plenaryo no, Mr. Chair. Uh, sa ilalim ng 1987 Constitution, tatlo lamang ang pamamaraan sa para sa pagpanukala ng amyenda o revision, Constituent Assembly katulad ng pinag-uusapan nga natin na uh, CONCON Constitutional Convention and People's Initiative. Hindi ba't pag-shortcut at pag-override ang ginagawa ng kapulangan sa intensyon ng framers ng Constitution na Kongreso na lang ang magtatakda ng foreign ownership and equity terms batay sa kagustuhan nito and gamit ang ruta ng ordinary legislation. So, Mr. Chair, the proposed amendments through House bills, especially on the terms on foreign ownership, to be introduced by ordinary legislation are not part anymore of the modes prescribed in the Constitution. Kasi nga, through ordinary legislation na ito, under the bicameral setup. Kaya itong un unless otherwise provided by law, hindi po lang po ito usapin ng economic provisions ng saligang batas. This also sets a dangerous precedent to all other provisions of the 1987 Charter, even those on political and civil rights. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, we will consider that as an explanation of your vote. So once again, the vote of uh, the Honorable Brosas is no. Please kindly put on record the no. Next, we will uh, we'll vote next. Um, Deputy Speaker Singson Mihan. I vote yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Next. Representative Tanhuatko III. Mm. In Zoom. In Zoom. Uh, what is the vote of Congressman Tanhuatko? Uh, through uh, uh, Nachet Uwalasha. How about the others? Uh, Congressman Corvera. Uh, Congressman Dale, are you there? Wala pa? Hindi ba sila nag we just, give, we just get na lang the votes get as the votes. Uh, they have uh, texted or they have signified to our to our committee secretary. Okay, in Zoom, 
Um, Mr. Chair, the ML France Pomaren voted yes. Pomaren, yes. Okay. Uh, okay, take note na lang. Um, yes, who is this, please? Uh, Alfred de los Santos, Mr. Chair. Alfred de los Santos, yes. Congressman, mm -hmm. please proceed. My vote is yes, Mr. Chair. And thank you for giving your vote. It will be recorded by our committee secretary. Thanks so much, Congressman Alfred. Anybody else in Zoom would like to get in? Vice Chair Divina Grace, you voted yes. Voted yes also on Zoom, yes. She was and here earlier this morning. Um, DML Garin voted yes. Okay. The, uh, DML Laxon well also yes. DML Jul uh, Julian Baronda, yes. Okay. And Representative Zamora voted yes. Any other members who would wish to manifest their votes in Zoom? Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, our Deputy Speaker, Robbie Puno. Yeah, my vote is yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, our Deputy Speaker. Thank you. We put your vote. Anybody else on Zoom? Yes, sir. Raul Manuel, Kabataan Party List, nagpaabot ng no vote niya. Yeah, Please, I, I, no vote of uh, Congressman Manuel. He was here this, also, this morning. Um, Deputy Minority Leader Coliada, is he around in Zoom? Uh, Col Congressman Coliada? Deputy Minority Leader Noel? Representative Abalos? And then, no for um, Representative Rosas and... Deputy Minority Leader Castro. Do we have already the result? Uh, you have forgotten to ask the name of the committee chairman. Oh, well, you mag vote ka, sir. Mag -vote. Hindi ka yata mag vote. I'm not allowed. You're so not just allowed to make a record that I only break the tie because so, others will ask, oh, what happens to the committee the chairman? We can only vote the tie. Just to clarify. Sir, I would just like to make a second. Second round of... Um, Second round, any other... Representative, member? Minority Leader Libanan. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to recognize somebody present now. Uh, Congressman okay. Bong Tevez. Oh. Mr. Chair, my vote is yes and kindly include as a co-chair, as a co-author. Thank you. You will be considered co-author and you registered a yes vote. Okay. Um, wait lang. Okay, so we have that, that this is in Zoom. Total already and on site as well. Okay. So the committee chair will now, if there are no other votes, will now declare, uh, announce the results of the voting for a committee report on calling for a constitution. Mm -hmm. Somebody's on the Zoom. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, Congressman Kopilar, yes. Mr. Chair, I would like to manifest to be co-author of both the uh, House bill, Mr. Chair, House resolution, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And have you voted already, Congressman Vicky? Yes, sir. And what yes. is the vote again? Yes, it's a yes. Yes, for, both, uh, yes for uh, we are now only tackling the resolution uh, for calling for a convention. So your vote is yes. And yes. you uh, kindly yes. place our, our uh, uh, Congressman Vicky as a co-author. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, votes on site and on Zoom. A total of yes is 13, uh, 16. No is three, abstain is one. So unless my pahabol na vote, hearing no one else, we declare that the resolution on the committee report for a resolution of both houses has been approved by the Committee on Constitutional Amendments. Okay. Any motion for the next uh, uh, committee report? Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, we hear Chairman P.D. Barsaga. Well, they look, I, I look, as I glance over at the committee report, I see that there are four bills calling for constitutional convention. And I would suggest that we provide the matrix in so far as these four bills are concerned so that they can be easily understand or be comprehended by the members of this committee. At the same time, as manifested by Deputy Senior Vice Chairman 
defensor is proposing amendments. And in the same vein, this representation would be proposing also amendments to this committee report. And therefore, I think it would be better that sufficient time be given to all of us. Uh, we'd like to ask uh, Senior Vice Chair to comment on the, on the uh, motion to have more time for the bill. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I would gladly suggest first that we open the consideration of the committee report on the bill uh, implementing the call for a constitutional convention so yeah. that we have already started the deliberations. We yes. can open the floor for amendments, including my own amendments, Mr. Chair. Yes, any motion first for the, to, adopt, to adopt the committee report on uh, entitled uh, House Bill and uh, implementing an act implementing uh, resolution of both houses number two calling for a constitutional convention. Any motion? And then we'll discuss the- I'd like to make a motion, um, Mr. Chair. Uh, so uh, we therefore would like to uh, therefore uh, solicit any second to the motion to consider this. Second, Mr. Second, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Congressman Bongalon and who is the uh, Bonsum? Co Congresswoman Marie V. Copilar. Copilar, okay, thank you. And Bong Tevez, Congressman. So we're now going to discuss now the uh, committee report, uh, proposed committee report uh, implementing our constituent power of voting in the committee for a call for a constitutional convention. First, any, any amendment uh, proposed? Mr. Chairman, may I be recognized? You are recognized, uh, Congressman Defensor. Mr. Chairman, I move that section two of the proposed act implementing the resolution of both houses, calling for a CONCON, be amended. Okay. The proposed wording was submitted earlier to the chairman. Sir, may I- uh, Can you read it and where to insert it? this? Proposed amendments to this bill, we can proceed with. Uh, we can proceed with other uh, comments before we vote. So, may I withdraw my previous motion, Mr. Chair? While uh, the crafting of the language of the appropriate language for Section Two is Thank being you. prepared, it's um, it's uh, been uh, recalled. And so uh, we hear the comments first from the minority, then we go to the majority. Anybody from the minority who would wish to. Uh, uh, discuss uh, this uh, committee report on the bill. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, our uh, Deputy Minority Leader, Congressman Daza. Uh, first of all, I think the Honorable Barzaga is uh, correct that we, we, you know, we should be given a little bit more time, look at the details of this proposed bill. Uh, but uh, again, you know, it's uh, uh, I'll defer to the wisdom of the committee, but um, just this morning, uh, for example, and that's why I think we should take our time, uh, just no less than a few hours ago, uh, I thought we heard a very good suggestion, Mr. Chair, from no less than the former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, who was appointed by the former president to head a commission to look into charter change. And one of the suggestions earlier, if you recall, uh, Mr. Chair, which I think you will appreciate uh, to do a hybrid constitutional convention wherein uh, members will be elected and some members can be appointed uh, by both the executive and the legislative branch. I think that has a lot of value. Uh, for example, uh, not because you're the chairman, uh, but I, I know the Honorable Rodriguez uh, uh, is probably one of the foremost experts now on constitutional amendment. You will not be able to sit in that convention. I would be the first member of the house, should there be a provision in here for appointments 
from the legislative branch, I would propose no less than the chairman to sit in that convention. It's not embodied in this version, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm sure with given a little bit more time, we can come up with improvements on this proposed bill. Uh, one of which is should the majority pass this, I would like to see experts uh, who may be appointed. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily, I don't think it's safe to assume that elected delegates will have the expertise and will really have the, uh, the necessary experience and background to be able to, uh, to do justice to something that as, you know, as fundamental as amending the constitution, Mr. Chair. So uh, that, that, I think my uh, appeal to the committee is um, maybe to give it a little bit more time uh, and uh, to be able to improve whatever version that we have now given to us uh, today. Thank you for that suggestion. And in fact, yeah, the chair is disposed of uh, to uh, give more time uh, to our members. And so the matrix, meanwhile, is not being printed in pursuant to the request of Chairman PD, There will be a matrix to be distributed. And of course, for the time. And so uh, therefore, uh, any, what is the pleasure of our members? I second the motion. Yes, second the motion. Also, yes. So uh, when can we have the matrix given to the members? We're still there, we're still there here. Still being uh, printed. printed. And then it will be reproduced after. Yes, would uh, uh, Wednesday be okay? Will that be sufficient time, matrix, and also to read the, all of this uh, so that we can meet on Wednesday? Yeah, maybe I always uh, would want this to be studied carefully. So would Wednesday be okay? Because if that is okay, uh, Congressman, uh, our Deputy Minority Leader, is Wednesday okay? Uh, I, I would prefer, you know, next the following week, but I'll defer to the Honorable Barzaga who had pointed out. Yeah, for the matrix. Initially. Yeah. I think Wednesday morning will be fine. Yes, because you're the proponent of having the matrix. Well, make sure that everyone gets a matrix by this afternoon. Yes, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair, I move that we suspend the deliberations and resume on Wednesday so that we can continue our deliberations on Wednesday at morning. 9 o'clock in, in the morning. 9 30 in the morning. Mr. Is that satisfactory to everyone? We reset this to give time for us to study uh, the matrix and also the uh, the bill itself and your proposals for MMS. Yes, Attorney Congressman Mongalon, any? Uh, second, uh, Mr. Chair. It's been moved and seconded that we have a recess today and we will meet on Wednesday in the morning at 9.30. Is that okay with everyone? And okay. okay, for Congresswoman Franz, about uh, Honorable Arlene Rosas. <laughs> Mr. Chair. We are with you. Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with that, there is no objection to the motion to reset and have a recess and reset the continuation of the deliberation of the committee report on the bill implementing the resolution of both houses, which has been approved. So with that, we declare a recess of this committee and we see each other at 9.30. Mr. Chair, on, may I before that, interject? Yes, before that, yes. Just to second. comply with our committee rules, our internal rules, um, this declaration of the committee is already given, uh, it's already due notice to all the members it's because there is notice. no more time of the three-day rule. Uh, okay, yes, uh, because we are giving just... A time for this. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, and Mr. Chair, uh, I'll assure that the minority will not make any objections on that procedural requirement. Thank you very much. So, with that, I call this, uh, I call a recess of this uh, hearing of the committee. We'll meet each other and the others who wish to attend on Wednesday at 9 30 in the morning. So, so uh, the recess is, is uh, proclaimed. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Yeah.